Ebo, uh, can you talk about your relationship uh, with Marshawn Lloyd and what it's been like, uh, how you knew him from high school and that, and what it's been like to now be teammates and uh, uh, how that relationship has grown since you've uh, arrived at South Carolina? I've, uh, <clears throat> I met Marshawn back in uh, middle school, uh, back in Delaware, top two stars, and we was on an all-star game together. I actually never played against him, but I was always on the defensive side leading the way. He was always on the offensive side leading the way. And uh, just us building that bond, us leading the team together, that's how we built our bond. And I never, like I said, I never played against him, but we've always worked together, uh, worked out together in high school. And so we had the same trainer and um, we built a bond that way. And then since him, me being down here, I've been with him every day. It's just, it's always been a brotherhood, but now it's, it's been able to elevate even more because I'm with him every day. I'm pushing him, he's pushing me. You know, it's just always been a brotherhood between us. And he said you guys uh, getting there, uh, he gets there at five o'clock, but you beat him to it. You guys uh, like those early morning workouts? Yeah, sometimes it's a competition. Sometimes it's not, you know. Um, I've always been like an early bird. My, uh, I got family members, even my uh, trainer back home, man, would be up 4.30, 4.45 getting a workout in. So when I just came here, it was no dif it was no different. You know, I just wanted to bring that same mentality, same effort. Colin Taylor. Ediba, Marshawn talked a couple weeks ago just about how appreciative he was of when he got down to Columbia and the things here. And he said, you're kind of the same way. Just what makes you so appreciative to, number one, be here and have the first couple months that you've been on campus lived up to the expectation after you put your name in the portal? Man, it's an opportunity of a lifetime, you know. I just, um, I never was worried about living up to any expectations or anything. I know with the, with Devo being here before me or anything like that, I just wanted to be my own my own person. I wanted y'all to see who I was, you know. So I wasn't really looking forward to uh, having expectations or anything. I just wanted to come and, and rock out. I wanted y'all to see who I was. So when somebody else behind me come, a new linebacker, and y'all like, yo, you got to play like Devo. You know, Debo Williams. So it's just like I just wanted to lead my own path. Dick Cox. Can you talk about the opportunity of coming in with a, a new coaching staff and trying to build a program and create excitement in, here in the SEC? Um, new coaching staff. So it's been new to everybody, you know, and we've just been coming together. I tell you what, I, I got here and it was like they already knew me. So I already been here two, three years the way I was treated. You know, it's just all I love. I never felt like I was a lagging behind or I wasn't able to lead. Like, I came here, Coach Beamer was like, yeah, I know you're new, I know you're young, but you you got a leader mindset, man. Lead the way. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how. If you haven't played a down yet, man, just just lead. Come here and lead. So that's um, it's definitely been fun so far. It's been family-oriented, and I have no complaints. Eric Boynton. Debo, just speaking from a guy who's from far, farther up north, what did you kind of know about the SEC? What was kind of your impressions not not being in the heart of SEC country? How excited are you to get a chance to play in what most consider the best, you know, college football conference in the country? Well, uh, Delaware-wise, I don't think – Delaware high school football-wise, I don't think there's ever been a player to play in the SEC. I think I'm the first. And then me and Marshawn, he's from Delaware. He didn't play high school football. But for us to both be in the SEC – it's, it's amazing, and it shows everybody back home in Delaware that it's possible, you know. So, and that's what we're here for. We lead, we the child posters for Delaware, and um, that's what we're just trying to prove now. And so, I wasn't that highly recruited, and I feel like I got something to prove because it's like I didn't have no Power Five offers, regardless if it was SEC, ACC, Big Ten, Big Twelve. And so, I kind of feel disrespected in that regard. But you know, it's time to pay for that, you know. So that's just how I'm coming. What, what were your impressions? What did you know about the SEC, if anything at all, before you signed on with Carolina? Did you watch South Carolina or Bama or Georgia play a whole bunch? Or did you know much about it overall? Oh, yeah. So, you know, uh, with Jadavion Clowney, that hit that he had against Michigan, that's just one of the biggest hits you could ever have. Everybody's seen that. You know, I'm a fan of football, not just a player. So, um Growing up, I never been a, a huge Gamecocks fan because I just never really been to South Carolina. But I know SEC, man, that's that's as big as it gets. And, you know, anywhere, if I just had the chance, I can remember me back in 10th or 11th grade, and I'm just like, yo, if I had the chance, man, I could really do something. And with me now having the opportunity of a lifetime, I just got to make the most of it. Gil McGranahan. Obviously, you're still kind of new to the system and, and haven't done much yet on the field with it, but but how is it this this defensive system that you're learning and under Coach White? What, what do you think about it? 
Man, I'm loving it, man. Um, we play in a 3-4, uh, and it's been going good. I love how uh, the backers were protected, you know, and so we could just come down here and fly. And so a lot of we, – we're going to be pretty aggressive. A lot of bliss is coming, you know, so it's been – I've been loving it, man. Kudos to Coach White. Dick Cox. South Carolina had a very popular player named Debo a couple of years ago who is now doing very well on Sundays, too. Does that put any extra pressure? People hear the name Debo, and first thing they think of was Debo Samuel and all, though. But just, just talk a little bit about that. I wouldn't say pressure, but it's like I just want to hold up to the name. You know, I just want to be better than what he was, you know. And then if it's another Debo that comes, he better be better than me. So it's just we holding up to the name. Colin Taylor. You know, you're one of the few guys on this roster that was actually recruited by Coach Beamer and the staff. I'm curious, what was that process like? And what is not only Coach Beamer, but the staff like when on the recruiting trail and when they're giving you the pitch to come to South Carolina? Um, so with me, um, I was already out of school. So it wasn't like he could just come talk to me or recruit me like that. So Marshawn was a big plan that like, bro, we need linebackers, man. Just try to hit the portal and I'm gonna see if I can make something happen. And I, I took a leap of faith and I went into the portal and first day I didn't, I didn't hear from nobody. So I'm thinking like, yo, they could take the offer back on me. Like, yo, I'm about to be in a hole now. And then the next day come and they were all over me trying to get my information, trying to see if I was down and um, they definitely show love. And I was here, I want to say I went to a portal on a Monday. I was in South Carolina by Friday. So it was no games being played. I got straight down here, and I was just ready to work. Defense being aggressive, um, just from a linebacker perspective, what does that look like, and how exciting is that for you? Very exciting, because as a linebacker, you're run first. So um, with us being very aggressive, I know it's no holding back. If he, if coach tell me go, I'm going. There ain't, ain't no going back. So. Um, it's definitely love for a linebacker. Any linebacker would love to be, have an aggr aggressive defense. John Dell. Debo, where does the nickname come from? So uh, the guy Friday, in Friday uh, by Ice Cube is produced by him. Uh, the guy Debo, he was a bully, you know. I'm not really a bully in real life. I don't, I don't like that. But on the football field, I'm a bully, and I'm going to let you know about it. And um, – that's why if you ever watch my film or my highlights, I'm, I'm trying to kill you when I run through you. And I'm not just trying to tackle you. I'm trying to hurt you. I don't want you to come back on the field. And that's how I got the name Debo. Uh, back when I was five, five or six, back when they had the Oklahoma drill, it was, a, it was legal. And um, coach was just giving, we was doing Oklahoma drill. My coach was uh, just giving people nicknames as we were hitting. And I had ran straight through somebody. And he just said, Debo. And it's been stuck ever since. You know, I'm 18 now. And I still got the name, so. Your parents and, and close friends call you that as well? Melins, aunts, everybody, man. Everybody call me Debo. If you call me Daryl, I'm going to kind of look at you crazy because I don't know who that is. Appreciate it. Thank you. Eric Boynton. Got a couple of for you, for you Debo. Do, have you ever met an, or heard of another Debo besides the movie character and Debo Samuel? I've heard of other players like uh, James Harrison. He put his nickname on Instagram is like Debo. And then it's another one. He played for the Atlanta Falcons. I've never met another Debo personally, but um, like famous wise, I've, I've heard of some. I've heard you in the past refer to yourself as a bully on the field only. Could you kind of describe to us what it is, what it is you like? There's some guys that are solid tacklers. There's other, there's other guys that take so much pride and just seem to really love to hit and, and uh, you know, really, really bring the hammer down on people. Can you kind of describe to, to us what it is about you that likes that part of the game so much? You know, if it wasn't for penalties and you can get kicked out of the game, I just – I wanted to create to, at one point in time, if you ran a slant as a wide receiver, you, you didn't want to run a slant. Now they run a slant with no fear, you know, and I kind of want to bring those days back. You know, I'm not going to sit here and put on a, uh, I forgot what they call it, but they used to have a little thing on the shoulder pads behind your neck. And um, I'm not going to sit here and be one of those, but I'm, I'm trying to come down and I want to put the fear in you. As a running back, I don't, I don't want you to run the ball. Tell, tell your coach to pass it. Cause you don't want to run no more. Cause I don't. You don't want Debo hitting you. And it's just a fear factor. If you somebody like a Mike Tyson when he's fighting, he already won. Cause you fear him. You know. No one asked about Marshawn as well. As far as um, what did he tell you about South Carolina? Obviously, it was a brand new coaching staff than the one that brought him in. But what were maybe some of the selling points that Marshawn, when he spoke to you, used to describe South Carolina in hopes of getting you on board? 
in all honesty, he, uh, cause he had me up, he had hit me up and he was like, bro, I can get you here. I'm like, yo, I'm not coming on as a, as a walk on. I already got a scholarship to another D1 school. He was like, I wouldn't hit you up if it wasn't a full scholarship. And once he said that, and I'm like, yo, they're in the SEC. This is a, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, you know? And it's not just for the name, you know, it's, uh, say I dominated in the SEC versus in the FCS. If I, What's the, what's the scale to that? First round, maybe reverse undrafted. So it's like I had to do something for me. You know, I wasn't doing it for family, um, friends, nothing. Because I was in Delaware before. They could uh, easily just come see me at my games. And so I had to make a decision for me and my future. So that he didn't even really have to do any selling points. I was I was here. I was all in. Hill McGrenian. You know, obviously not a, a lot of guys get recruited out of Delaware to go play college football. Um, obviously, you and Marshawn and you know, Clemson had an offensive lineman about 10 years ago. Who, who are some of the, the best players that you know of that to come out of Delaware? High school football players, college, college or the pros or anything, really. Maybe um, not any, in any of them. You got uh, Wendell Smallwood. He's a running back. I think he's uh, with the Redskins right now. And then you got um, – uh, wide receiver, he played for Middletown. Uh, he's with the Buccaneers now. He just won the championship. Wide receiver, uh, number 14. Um, or is he 20? Yeah, he's 14 now. And uh, we got we got a couple. Troy Reader, he played for the Rams, starting linebacker. He came in undrafted, starting linebacker now. It's like we just – sometimes we just don't get that chance. But when we make it, and we're going to make the most of it, you know. And it's a, uh, it's a couple more of us. I just don't know off the top of my head right now. But it's like – we so slept on when we do make it somewhere big, we always dominate because we got that much passion behind us because we just don't. We don't make it. We don't get the opportunity. We don't get that chance, you know. Was, was there anybody who, who comes to your mind immediately who, who didn't get a chance that, that you thought could have been real good for whatever reason he didn't, he didn't make a name for himself after high school or anything? Hmm. Okay. My, boy, uh, my boy Will Knight. He in the uh, portal right now. He's at the University of Delaware. He's in the portal right now. And that man should be somewhere power five. And we just don't get the opportunity. He's the leading rusher for Delaware. You do that in any other state, maybe besides like Rhode Island or something. <laughs> but you do that in any other state, let you do that in Texas, man. You'll be a five star just because it's Delaware and they don't respect their competition. He don't get that chance. John Dell. Debo, this fan base is craving to see what Marshawn Lloyd can do on the field, you know, in a uniform, uh, you know, other than, you know, watching his tape from high school. As someone who grew up with him, as someone who has seen him play live, can you just kind of give a, a taste of, of what he's like and, and what he can do once he steps on the field later this fall? Man, that boy is electric, man. I seen him. Uh, I'm 12, 13 years old. He's jumping over people. I'm not even thinking about jumping over somebody. This man was doing stuff just you won't see. And he bring it to high school. He's going to bring it to college, too. And then the other level, he goes after that. It's just he's so electric, man. It's like you might think he's going to run past you. He might run you over. You might think he might run you over. He's going to juke you. It's just so much stuff he got to his game. And it's like I said, back to the fear factor. With him, you might you might fear he's going to do one thing. He'd do something else. He just got so much in his arsenal, you know, so. I wouldn't be surprised if him and Kevin, the, the best two punch uh, there is this year, you know, the best two running backs on the same team, kind of like the uh, North Carolina running backs was this year. Wouldn't be surprised if they did the same exact thing or better. And I was going to follow up with Kevin Harris. You know, he led the SEC in rushing yards in the regular season last year. Just what is it, what is it like to go up against him in practice, two pretty big dudes going at each other? Yeah, yeah, I love going against him. We uh, always got competitions together, man. He's he's strong. His legs are humongous. He's strong, man. So and he quick too. So it's just like he's getting me better. I'm getting him better because I'm not going back down. He's not going back down, you know. And that's those are my guys right there. Thank you, Dick Cox. You know, you talked about you used to love the drill Oklahoma before they outlawed it. Did you ever get to participate in bull in the ring before they outlawed that? Or And what are some of your favorite contact drills in practice? Did all of that, man. Uh, definitely Oklahoma is my favorite. You sitting on your back, you get up, you got to run through. Um, definitely did bull in the ring. I'm glad they got rid of that because you're going to put somebody out. I used to put a lot of people out in that. And uh, it was this one drill. I forgot what it was called. But before I was young, I've had to be like six or seven. But before every game, I would hit – my coach would make me hit every player just to get them warmed up. And it was, uh, I don't think it's an actual drill, but something my coach used to make me do. So, Last one, Derek Boynton. 
Yeah, you seem to take us back a lot to like when you were five or six or nine and ten and playing the game. Um, when did you start playing football? And secondly, did the coaches when you were young after have to, ever have to come to you and say, hey, Debo, man, back, back it off a little bit. This is only practice. Don't be killing your teammates out there. It sounds like you're you're pretty aggressive even during, during practices. Yeah, all the time. That's why I kind of take it back uh, to when I was young because I learned a lot then. And um, now I, I kind of chill. Practice-wise, college-wise, you got to go hard. But uh, high school-wise, I kind of chilled on my teammates, just let them do their own thing because I didn't I didn't need to hit them. And I, uh, I kind of learned that. And um, sometimes it's just I got a lot of steam I just want to let out, you know. So it's uh, I just been trying to save that for the game. But I take it back to when I was young because – I learned that aggressiveness from my dad. Like we, I literally be out in the backfield with him, and we we hitting each other. He put his pads on, and I'm hitting them all the way up till I was like 14, you know. So, and doing drills with him and stuff. So I just um, I've been molded to attack, attack since I was young. So that's why I kind of take it back sometimes.